I got a real interesting challenge for you today. And I think that you're gonna be intrigued by the, by the information you actually find on your own uh, through observation out in the field. And what I'm saying in the field is what I'm just talking about in just general public. Whether it's this weekend in a public setting or it's this weekend maybe in a gathering with friends and family or just even today when you go into work or when you go at the gym or when you go to wherever it is you plan to go, I got a challenge for you that you'll be intrigued by. It, it has a lot to do with self-awareness and influence. Again, it has to do with self-awareness and influence. And I'm going to break it down into two different views because when you're when you're playing this game, and I like to call it game because no one knows you're doing it, but you're actually kind of like a spy, right? Where you're you're aware of what you're looking out for, but you're not you're but you're being covert about it. And so, you know, you're kind of kind of being um, how can I put it? You're kind of being like uh, like a spy, man, like James Bond, man. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> When, when you're being self-aware, what you're doing is you're actually going into an environment and you're paying attention to how that environment affects you. You're paying attention to how you're influenced by certain people that are around you. So let me give you an example. Have you ever been kind of in a monotone state where you're kind of just chill going on about your day? There's nothing really like, you know what I mean? Like you're chill, like you're not upset, you're not happy, you're just kind of monotone, right? and you go into a setting and there's stress involved. Like you just walked into the, to the, set, to the setting, you can feel that stress, you can feel that tension. And I want you to pay attention to how it affects you or even if you were looking back and be like, yo D, I just actually had that situation yesterday. Well, I want you to pay attention to how it affected you and how it influenced you and your energy and the rest of your day. And I want you to think about the complete opposite of that. Let's just say again, you're in a monotone state and you walked into, a, let's say an environment where it was happy, it was cheerful, it was very, um, it was friendly. I want you to, to also pay attention to how that affected you, how that influenced your energy and actually maybe it lifted you up. And I want you to just pay attention to how energy affects you because the way it affects you, it also affects the people that you engage with. And if we identify how it affects us, then we can have a little bit more control over how our momentum goes throughout the day. You see, what I found is whether you're in sales or you're just going throughout life, it is up to you on how you determine your momentum. Every single day, whether you like it or not, you're gonna have this emotional momentum. And I think emotions are what carry us throughout our day. It's what separates us. It's what, it's literally what what defines the success between the unsuccessful. The only difference is just the emotional awareness, the emotional intelligence. And being in sales, you have to have emotional intelligence anyway, so it's a win-win. But through this observation, I really think that you're gonna walk away really kind of mystified. Like you're just gonna be like, whoa, I never really paid attention to that. <laughs> so just being self-aware of how you're affected can really make a dramatic impact of how empathetic you are when you're engaging with other people and so if you're if you understand how you can be influenced by energy that is subconsciously in the air in in the how can i put it in the area right no one's saying hey if you come in, in this room i need you to be negative no one said that but but you could just feel it because there's a vibration within it and i don't want to get all guru on you i'm not talking about like you know what i mean like I, i'm not I'm not that dude, but but now that I understand these these certain things and I've been studying it for a minute now, I do believe in vibrations. I do believe that everyone has their own frequency. And you'll relate too because you can kind of sense, like if you think about maybe your closest friend or your companion or your wife or your partner or whoever it is that you chill with most, you can sense when something is off with them. Maybe you don't even you don't even have to look at them. You could be on the phone with them, but you could just sense something is wrong, right? And it's it's it could be through their tonality, it could be through their demeanor, their body language. But the reason why they're kind of uh, radiating that energy is because of their emotion. It's it's crazy. Like there's that saying, like you know, you wear you, your emotions on your sleeve, or you wear your heart on your sleeve. What they're talking about is you display your emotions. And when you have the ability to control your emotions and, and know how to manipulate your emotions, 
you can do the same thing with everyone else, right? Like the only way that you could do something is if you've done it before. <laughs> or I mean, the only way you could teach someone how to do it or or make someone do it is if you understand the process and you've done it yourself before. So I think that when you're coming from a place of self-awareness, you're going to have this insane advantage just from engaging with the general public. So again, it doesn't need to be in a sales situation. It could be maybe if you're asking for, you know, I don't know, return at Best Buy. If you're asking for, you know, uh, an exception at a club to get through, right? Like if you're asking for some sort of deal, like wherever it is, if you're buying a car, if you're buying a house, you're negotiating with this talent because you understand how to persuade and influence, which by the way, um, today is Thursday, January 24th, 2019, and every Thursday I do Breakfast at Champions. And this 30-minute live stream at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is going to be being played live. Every Thursday it's played live on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Come join me. If you're on those platforms, be sure that you add my channel on that platform because if you, you, you'll catch some content that you don't see anywhere else. And... Anyway, this this live stream is going to be dedicated about persuasion and influence. And I think persuasion and influence are the two most important key parts of understanding how to sell somebody. And if you're trying to, you know, be successful in life, let alone in sales. I believe in life everyone is is a salesman. Like you're selling yourself right now to watch this video. You're selling yourself to stay at your employment. You're selling yourself to wake up and go to the gym. You're selling your kids to do their chores. You're selling your partner to listen your message, whether it's let's eat here or whether it's I'm gonna get this or you know you shouldn't do that. Whenever we communicate, I believe it's a sale. It's because it's an intent to get something in return, right? So, so on that note, let's go ahead and move on to the second point. So again, it's self-awareness and influence. So why? I believe it's important to understand influence is because sales is all about influence. Like I need to influence you to trust me. I need to influence you to believe in me. I need to influence you to hire me. And so this is this is our our real intent. But typically when when most salesmen fail, we believe that the only way we can influence is by price, is by points, is by no cost services, is by you know, this special cool product. And I want, I need to tell you it's not because you have to, again, look at the way you are influenced and what, what mostly influences you are your emotional triggers. It's your emotional state. And so if you understood how to influence then, and you also understood how to read emotions and emotional states, you can, you can redirect the emotion and control the emotion. So again, if you're, if, you're, if you're getting in the heat of the moment, right? Like let's say you're doing your pitch and, and you're going through finally the points, fees, and services. And this person's saying, you know what, Daniel, I, I'm just going to go ahead and think about it. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, give you a call back maybe in a couple of days. Or I'll give you a call back in, in, you know, next week. We get triggered with an emotion at that point because we're like, no, dude, the whole plan is I need to close you right now. Like the chances of me hearing back from you in a week is very slim. You see, we understand that. And our emotion will then radiate through, through a tone of frustration. And so then we get defensive. So that is what we need to really pay attention to. But I also need you to pay attention to the emotional state of your prospect and look at it as a way to use the techniques that I outline here at Sales Remastered. And so if they're expressing emotion of hesitation or it's basically the emotion of fear, it's the fear of missing out, meaning they're fearful that they're missing out on a better opportunity. And, and, and when you understand that and identify that, then you can actually redirect them. So I'm going to give you a, a simple hack on how to redirect someone's emotion. And I'm going to use this example because I think it happens often, meaning we get objections often, right? So let's just say if someone said, hey, hey D, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, and think about it. I'll give you a call next week. What you can do, instead of get defensive and say, well, well, why not buy right now? Because that's going to trigger them in, in, in feeling like they're pressured. No one wants to be pressured to make a, to make a decision, right? So you say, you, first off, you always want to agree. Say, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll go ahead and put you on my calendar for next week. Oh, but wait. Let's see. Let, what if, right? And, and that is the actual bridge to get back or to redirect and say, well, what if? 
It's those three words. Those are three magical words that will help you redirect. So if a prospect is telling you like, hey, you know what, uh, it sounds good and all, but I'm gonna go and think about it, or uh, you know what, I've been quoted this by blah, blah, blah. If you put in those words in, in, first by agreeing with that person and say, yeah, I completely understand, or yeah, sure, no problem. Well, what if now you get to take back the frame, but you're, you're actually agreeing with them meaning you're showing them that you're like them and that you understand them, you relate to them. Subconsciously, that builds a rapport and keeps it friendly. Where if we bite back and say, well, what did they quote you? Well, did they give you an LE? Well, you have to understand that if, you know, if you're looking at that lame LE or if you're looking at that weak estimate, these loan officers don't know what they're doing. right? That's a defensive state. Now what you're doing is, in so many words, you're telling this person that they're making the wrong choice and no one wants to be told that they're doing wrong. If anything, they want to be able to know that you're like them, that, that you are on the same level. And so you're going to be more effective by saying, yeah, I completely get it. I completely respect it. I'm sure there are probably better costs out there. I'm sure there are be there's a better lower rate out there. Well, what if, right, there, so you, you actually hooked onto them they don't feel any tension because you actually agree with them, which is different from everyone else. And you redirect it by saying, well, what if? And then you say, yo, D, well, what do I say after? Well, what if? <laughs> well, what if we did this? And then you go back into that pitch, right? Say, well, what if we did blah, 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 right? Like, well, what if we took your deferred payment and your escrow balance refund and we considered actually prepaying interest. Now, what prepaying interest does is it allows you to pay interest on real estate, which you can confirm with your CPA is fully tax deductible. Most homeowners that I deal with in your county favor this alternative rather than going with the generic, you know, no cost service because they're protecting themselves for the big picture, the, the long run. This is more of a long-term goal. Unless you like to do this process every year or every other year, I would strongly recommend that you consider that because it's still gonna allow you to, and then you go through your value stack. What's your value stack? Your value stack is, is basically the, it's kind of the ripple effect of the result. So the, the result, which is savings, right? No matter what rate, no matter what cost, the savings is gonna create a rippled effect. So it's still it, it, like it will still allow you to save an extra three hundred or four hundred dollars per month. It will still enable you to uh, replenish your bank account that you shared with me that you depleted because that you you know you had to fix your car or whatever the situation is. It will still allow you to wipe out all your credit card debt so that it can help you improve your FICO score and prepare you for retirement and give you more flexibility and allow you to live with with more than six months of living inside your bank account. Does that make sense? That's a value stack. It's basically the how the 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 actual benefit or the result of your service creates this ripple effect throughout everything else. So with that extra savings, you then get to pay back, you know, off your credit card debt or you get to replenish your bank account or you get to increase your investment distribution or investment, you know, portion or contribution every single month. You get to ensure that you retire on time. You get to whatever is applicable to them. It creates this ripple effect. And so you want to have a value stack because anytime you uh, overcome an objection, you want to put that right back in their face and say, but yeah, you know, I, I completely get it. I'm sure there are lower fees and lower costs than mine. Well, what if we, right? And then you go right back into the call because that allows you to take back the attention and gives you one more time to influence them to hire you that day. So I hope this information helps. Please comment, like below. And uh, if this is your first time watching the channel, please be sure to share this link with your team. Share this link with another loan officer you know in the industry. And, uh, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell. If you're on Facebook, hit the like on the homepage so that you add me to your stream. And don't forget, every single Thursday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Pacific Standard Time, right, in the Western Zone. So if you're in the East Coast, it's going to be like 1130 your time. And uh, you want to tune in. You want to tune in to the Breakfast of Champions because every single week is a different concept. It's a different topic. And in this particular uh, live stream today that's going down, it's going to talk about um, uh, how to influence and persuade more sales. So I think that that's going to be important to you because you got to imagine how much do you make off of one sale? How much do you make per sale? Right. If you think about it, like some of you get paid 100 bips 
So that means if I helped you persuade and influence someone who had a $300,000 loan, wouldn't that make you three grand a day, right? If I helped you persuade even someone at a $100,000 loan, wouldn't that make you a G today? What if I showed you how to do it so effectively that you could do it every single day? So every single day you can, you can, you can create a sale and generate, let's say, $300,000 in loan amount per day, in volume per day. Wouldn't that mean I just made you $15,000 or I just helped you, I helped you understand how to make $15,000 a week? So what is the big picture, man? What is your return? You might be like, yo, but D, man, my employer cheap. They don't pay me 100 bips. Okay, boo-boo. Let's just say they pay you 25 bips. So 300,000 at 25 bips, what is that? Um, 750 bucks? It's not bad, boo-boo. Like whatever it is, like, you know, you understand that you have your position, you have this return. So if I could show you how to get more on your return, how much, how much interest do you have in that? So I know that it means a lot. And if you want to learn more about the, the techniques that I share with you, I'm going to be announcing something very special today. And for those of you who stayed on this video for over 15 minutes, I got a special announcement. The sales boost camp is now going live today on a very affordable payment plan. I've opened it up because I'm seeing the effects and the res and just the residual effect of how the techniques are helping these students. I'm getting more and more testimonials. I'm getting more and more insight of how dramatically it's helping sales agents, both inside, outside, purchase and refinance, climb to the top. My students in my course are rising to the top 10 percent of their company you have to understand the power of that and when you get to that top 10 percent i want you to think how much how much are those people making now here's the in, here's the crazy thing about it is that people pay thousands of dollars for this information that i'm giving inside this course and i'm making it so affordable that there's just no reason why you can't give yourself that special treatment you can't pass up on this opportunity that teaches you how to take advantage of the resources in front of you so you can make your own path. Man, if you're ready, click the link below. It's called uh, Sales Remastered Boost Camp. And, and it's going to tell you all about it and enroll into it, man. If I can show you how to make an extra five or $10,000 a month, what would that do for you? If I can show you how to make an extra five to $10,000 a week, what would that do for you? Would it be worth the small investment? I think so. So I'll see you there.